<laughs> How's it going everyone? Alex here. Welcome to part three of my Welcome to YouTube series. So in this part three, we're gonna be talking about the photos I took when we went to Mount Whitney. I came out of the weekend with about 31 images that I was pretty happy with. I put them at the three to four star category rating for myself. I wanted to go over 10 images today. Seven of the images in no particular order I would like to say are my strongest images of the full set. And then three of the images I wanna say are gonna be the weakest from my full set. Now I wanna do it in this format because I don't wanna go over all 31. I'll link the images all below. You'll be able to see all of them. But I wanted to pick 10 images and really talk about them in depth. I wanted to say some pros, some cons, see what I did well, and see what I can improve on. The ability to self-critique and to be able to point out strengths and weaknesses, I think is super important. So let's dive right on into these images, guys, and see what we got. First up is actually one of the first images I got. And I want to say that I was very happy with this image right here. Now the reason why is because I utilized my 15 millimeter and I think that I captured the foreground very well. It's one of the most illuminated sections of the image and it captures the foreground which was this beautiful little valley cutting through in the Alabama hills. Now the background of the image I think kind of provides this ominous overlooking feeling, which I really enjoy. It's darker than the rest of the image. It has this sharp line, which was because of the early morning light. And it does a good job defining the ridge line, which I think is also a key characteristic of this image itself. Overall, I'd like to put this image around a 3.5 to a 4. I wish the lighting was a little bit better, but there's always next time. All right, guys, the next image I want to talk about is a photo of Mount Whitney itself. I was really happy with the color on this photo. The way the light just illuminates the tips of the mountain itself. And then we have this beautiful foreground, which provides a little bit of context. You kind of see where you're at the Alabama Hills. Another element that I like of this image that it has this really deep blue in the valley and the way it transitions just to the lightness of the light blue in the sky, I feel like this has like this really almost warm but cold feeling at the same time. Overall, I wanna give this image, again, around a 3.5 to four out of five stars. This image is gonna be one of the three images that I think I could have improved upon. Now, there's a few things in this image that I really like. I like the color. I like the time of the day it was shot. The shadows are casting very long and I think it's creating some unique contrast. The reason I have this as one of the three that I'd like to improve upon is I just don't think the composition is the most compelling. It doesn't feel like there's too much of a main subject, but then at the same time, the ridge line of the Alabama Hills in correlation to the mountain range in the back, to me, it almost feels like they're trying to touch, but they're not. And from when I was in college and learning this, we like to call those awkward tangents. And because there's not really that much of a main subject, overall the image just feels muddy or what I think Ansel Adams would have called confused seeing. Next on the list, I would like to talk about one of the photos while I was driving up the Whitney Portal Road itself. I think this image describes a really good kind of transitional period in the mountain where you can see the tree line is transitioning to just the sheer rock face and then you kind of get the peak at the very top with the snow kind of covered on you can tell there's a distinct elevation change the sky in this image I think works really well the storm was rolling in so we had some fog and haze rolling in over the mountaintop so it kind of added a certain bit of ambiguity to the mountain range it ties really well in with the foreground which is that deep dark green almost black and the overall image has a really nice fade 
from a dark brightness to a very bright brightness. And I think it works very well. I would probably put this image right around a four star. Okay guys, next up is one that I'm super happy about. This one was shot early morning in the Alabama hills. I had hiked up and over one of like the little ridges and I got this cool vantage point and I cracked up my 15 millimeter lens. I knew I wanted a shot like this because you could just tell that these rocks are just piled and piled on top of each other. Or it seems that way. It's more of an erosion process. Nevertheless, it creates this really compelling, just feel the boulders. I knew if I found a good ridge line, I'd be able to point my 15 millimeter down and I would just paint this very vast and broad landscape of boulders. So that's what I did. I got up there at the right time of day and in conjunction with the composition, the lighting and color, I want to place this right at a four star. I was super happy with how this one turned out. Next up, this is going to be one where I'm going to say, I'm not sure if it's a good or bad photo. One side of me says that it has a lot of good things going for it, but the other side says there's just one big thing to me that detracts from it. When looking at the image, I'm very, very happy with the color, the, the atmospheric perspective of the clouds rolling in over the mountains, but the big elephant in the room for me is the composition. I think that the composition has a lot of unique elements in it with the Alabama hills and the Sierra Nevada range right in the background, the color, the lighting, but there's really no main subject. And although I've captured all of the elements of the landscape that's there, I just feel like I could have put more of like a defined subject on it to really bring it to like a complete piece. Overall, I'm not saying it's the worst. I am only going to put it at like a 2.5 to 3 but I really wish I could have found a little more of a compelling composition. So I think this next image blends really well to this past image that we talked about. Once again, we have the Alabama Hills, we have the Sierra Nevada range in the background, and we again have some unique weather going on to create a good separation between foreground and background. Only this time around, I think this is where it really worked out better, and it was to my point of the last image. This one, it feels like I have a much more defined subject. In comparison to the last image, the reason why I think this one's a little more successful is because I now have a subject. It's this main rock formation that's brightly painted by the morning sun. Not only is it a main subject because of the lighting, but because of the size of it. Another element that I think is better in this image in comparison to the last one is how the foreground interacts with the background. It's in a much more deliberate and defined way and I think that it helps kind of create a little bit more of a dynamic feeling. And speaking of being dynamic, let's talk about the weather and I think that's one of the main elements of this image that works very very well. We have this beautiful morning light cutting down the, on the valley, the Alabama hills. But in the background, we have this big looming storm over the mountain range where the sun wasn't able to hit in comparison to the other photos from the previous morning where the mountain range was lit up like with these beautiful blues and purples. This time around, we have this deep storm cloud lying over. And because of that, we get this really unique separation, but at the same time, it's just so dynamic and how it kind of compels its overall presence to you. I'm going to put that one at a four, maybe a 4.5. Again, if I'm going to really be a critique, I might want to adjust the color just a little bit, but overall, like I said, four to 4.5, super excited with this one. All right, guys, with this one, we have another 16 by eight format. I was really excited how this one turned out. So with this image, I got a really unique vantage point. In conjunction with good lighting, I was able to capture this amazing composition. The way that it almost feels balanced and not real, it has this point right in the middle with this beam of light shining down. This is just perfect timing and a little bit of good composition, all tied into just what to me is a stellar image. To me, one of the most unique things about this photo is how one of the main focal points, the horn that shoots up right in the middle of the image, had this beautiful little pocket of sun come through the, the clouds to illuminate it. Perfect timing, perfect composition, 
really happy how this one all came together. We're gonna give this one another four to 4.5 out of five stars. Super excited with this one, guys. All right, guys, we have two images left. They're gonna both be ones that I wanna critique because I think they're close to being successful, but I just have to, you know, focus the eye a little more and really come out with a more compelling composition again. And I highly suggest you guys go view the link in the description below. There it'll bring you to my portfolio site and you can see the full set of images. And I have a lot of really compelling black and white images that I was happy with from this trip. This one I think is really really close but it's going to lend itself back to the earlier image that I was critiquing. And that is composition. I think the way, again, the weather is interacting with the mountains and I have the trees kind of funneling your eye open to this broad rock wall is very compelling. But there's just no main subject and where the light is shining down onto the rock wall, it's not to me the most compelling spot of the wall. So it's very, very close, but I think I just want to tune my eye just a little more. So I'm going to put this one right here at about a 2.5 out of 5 stars. And finally, we're gonna end it on this image right here. Now this is from when I actually hiked up to the Whitney Base Camp. It wasn't too far from the main parking lot. You hiked up a couple switchbacks and you got up to this beautiful lake and right there was the camp as well. Now, like I said, I'd really encourage you guys to view the full set of images via the link down in the description below because I got a lot of great images that are snowy and this really beautiful area up there. Even a few at the lake itself with some beautiful reflections. I'd highly encourage you to see some of the better images, but I wanted to touch note on this one specifically. This one I thought was gonna be amazing when I was taking it. This happens occasionally when you kind of get there. It had a lot of cool elements. It has this little valley that starts in the upper right that kind of cuts down and left. And that has a lot of fall elements. You can see that we have some reds, some oranges from the trees and where the, there is nourishment coming down from the mountains. And then we have the storm rolling in with this blanket of snow being laid down. So it's kind of like a changing of the season element. And when I was taking the image, I was super excited with how it was turning out. When I was taking it, however, I was struggling on figuring out what focal length I wanted to shoot at. I ended up settling on a 15 millimeter because I thought the foreground was gonna be a little more interesting. But after a finer eye on the computer when getting back and editing it, I just wasn't really happy with the final image. Like I said, I think it has a lot of unique elements to it, but just the, comp the composition and with no main subject, I think it kind of struggles to find footing. I'm gonna put this one again at a 2.5 out of five stars. Overall guys, I was super excited with how most of the images turned out. Like I said, and I'll remind you for one last time that all the images are listed below in the description. You can view the full set for me going over to Mount Whitney over the weekend. Some closing notes that I'd like to talk about guys is like I said in the beginning of this video, this is part of a three part welcome to YouTube series for myself. I do a lot of outdoor things. Um, I like to bring my camera along as much as I can to document those, whether it's just going out specifically to take photos or mountain biking or rock climbing or just going on a hike. Uh, I kind of like tying in my artistic and outdoor side together. So uh, closing notes for this welcome series is that I plan on making a lot of fun videos in the outdoors, whether it's gonna be specific photo videos and critiquing like this, or if it's gonna be taking it out like part two where I go on an adventure and you kind of see more of a hands-on. I wanna keep this channel open and it's a fun creative environment for me to share all my new adventures. So until next time, thanks for joining me guys and welcome to YouTube.